Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2306. Today we're talking about a very cool new YouTube channel that I think you're going to love that's all about automobiles. So be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Fairhope, Alabama, with a very special guest by the name of Ray Innings. Ray, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Laying some, some patches down, as they say. Now, before I get into introducing you, what's one little thing that maybe most people don't know about Ray Innings? Uh, most people don't know that I'm a closet book nerd. Oh, cool. I like that. Yeah, I love, I love books. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, we've had lots and lots of authors on this show, hundreds, as a matter of fact. And one of the benefits of having authors and publishers contacting me all the time is they always send me their books. And I'm in the process of... Uh, cataloging my automotive library which is nearing about 850 books so uh wow yeah it's a little crazy but i figured that maybe in my old age when i'm sitting around in a rocking chair i'll have a lot of cool books to read because i can't keep up with the books that that keep coming in do you have a special and we're going to ask you this question a little later for a specific book but is there a style or type of book you like to read um, I like to read everything. I mean, I do have a favorite author, but I, I, I really, you know, it's, it's like television or anything else. Uh, if it's good, it's good. It doesn't really matter the genre, right? I will, I will dive into it. Well, cool. My wife and my kids are just voracious readers. I, I have to say, I don't get to read as much as I would like, which is kind of silly from a guy who's got that many books on his shelf. It's just a time thing for me, but my wife, I mean, she would go to the library and just get three books and read them in one week and now she's really into audiobooks because they come right to her pad she doesn't have to go anywhere and a little secret you may know this being a, an avid reader but if you join a local library they'll send you audiobooks for free right to your device yes sir yes they will Yep. I told that to people and they go what and nothing against audible or any of these other companies but yeah and if they don't have what you want They'll get it. So you figure your taxes are already paying for the library, so why not? So Exactly. A <laughs> little secret here. Good tip. That's a good tip. Yeah, definitely. Well, let me give you an introduction here. Ray Iddings got his start in automotive entertainment back in 2005 when he developed, produced, and hosted an internet radio show. Kind of sounds a little bit like a podcast type thing. <laughs> this led to Ray becoming a producer and eventually a showrunner, having produced and developed unscripted series for 16 years. Ray has produced hundreds of hours of television, webisodes, and music videos. He produced several successful shows for Fox's Speed, a network including Past time and first automotive game show drag race high show for mtv mav tv motor trend food network cmt and the outdoor channel ray joined brian Besson a year ago to launch speed tube tv it's a new streaming automotive channel that he's going to share with us today but first a word from our sponsors so let's give them a little love and we'll be right back buckle up years ago when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy my carrier's rates went up Way up, but my usage was the same and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collectors Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collectors Insurance. I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. 
For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. Their talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. If you're listening to this program, there's a pretty good chance you believe what I believe, that the collector vehicles we love are more than just a means of getting from one place to the other. They're a part of our culture, our identity, and as a people, they bring us together at vintage races, classic car auctions, and thousand mile rallies. That's why I support the RPM Foundation, which exists to ensure that the critical skills necessary to preserve and restore these important vehicles aren't lost to time. RPM stands for Restoration, Preservation, and Mentorship. And their goal is to inspire the next generation of vehicle restoration professionals through its outreach programs. And they include Shop Hop, Off to the Races, the RPM Future Class, and many others. These programs engage talented young people across the country and connect them with mentors and a variety of opportunities in the industry. For more information on how the RPM Foundation is driving the future of collector vehicles skill trade, Visit rpm.foundation today. So, Ray, let's go back first in time before we get into what you're doing with SpeedTube TV. Getting into this genre and how it's changed since 2005, oh my gosh, things are just constantly in change. But what drew you into this career? And uh, then we'll kind of fast forward into what you're doing today. Uh, Okay, well, you're going to, you'll laugh at this. So (laughs) then it was called Internet Radio. Uh, Steve Jobs hadn't coined the term podcast yet. And a friend of mine, I, I did I did business loans before I became a producer. So if you needed a couple million dollars to expand your business, I was the guy you came to. And I grew up in Arizona, uh, and I have a unholy love for the Volkswagen bug. Nice. <laughs> and one of the appraisers that worked with me, uh, he and I were sitting around talking one day. He grew up in California, and we were talking about how there were no VW events in the Midwest because I was living in Indiana at the time. And so we got this brilliant idea. Wouldn't it be cool to put on two or three of these drag races, Volkswagen drag race events? Uh, You know, the Midwest doesn't have any. So we started this series and our finale, our, our final race was at IRP, Indianapolis Raceway Park. And I get a call out of the clear blue from a guy who says we're this internet sports channel and we want to come out and cover your event. Can, can we do it? Yeah, great. Come on out. So he shows up and the event is well underway and he comes up to me and says, look, my uh, color guy didn't show up and I don't know anything about VW drag racing. Would you mind coming up in the, in the booth and talking on the radio so that you know we can cover this event? And I was like, sure. So I go up and I do it. Turns out to be their most highly rated show that they've had since they were in in business. And he calls me up after the event and says, do you think you could make a weekly show about air-cooled VW drag racing? And me being too ignorant to know better, I said, yes, (laughs) I could. (laughs) I can do that. No problem. (laughs) And so, and so I started doing this, this internet, internet show, which became widely popular because the thing that I learned, the first question I'd always ask on the show of every guest is what's your VW story? Because everybody of a certain age has a story of, you know, my buddy had one that had a big hole in the floorboard and you could see the the road as you drove drove down the street in it. Or I had one, I had to push start it every time I got into it and it was amazing. So I had a lot of, uh, so a lot of the guys that I loved when I was, when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, I would see race at these bugging events. I would have them on the show and I would treat them like you would you would talk to a NASCAR driver or an F1 driver, and it just became this this really popular thing. And that show led me into meeting Rich Christensen, who's the host of Pink's and uh, Pink's All Out. Oh yeah. And Rich saying to me one day, we were talking one day on the phone, and 
He said, we had some ideas, some television ideas, and he puts me on hold. The next thing I know is we're talking to the head of development at Speed. We're pitching them some show ideas, and they're like, yeah, we'll give you a little bit of money to try out. And, I mean, almost overnight, I'm moving to Nashville to be a producer because (laughs) Rich is like, you could be a producer. And I said, I don't know what that is. I don't know. What is a producer? What I learned. Um, So... Well, this is really cool. And you mentioned bugs. I know we have a mutual friend, Randy Carlson, who on SpeedTube yeah. has a show about VW bugs and so forth. And he's he's kind of into bugs, isn't he? Yes. And you know, what I love about Randy, Randy is my favorite kind of car guy in the fact that, you know, he loves them all. He, he loves Volkswagen. But Randy has, he has a nose for the ridiculous. Some <laughs> of the cars that Randy has had come through his shop are just, I mean, there's no other word for it than ridiculous. And I love that. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about, we're going to get into SpeedTube in a minute, obviously, but sure. I want to talk a little bit about what's been happening because the the car genre TV show and how this is all coming to us from major television channels to YouTube to all the different venues. I mean, this has been a very dynamic changing thing since 2005. Can you kind of walk us through the evolution of what's been happening? Because we've seen, you mentioned speed. Of course, speed came and went and all these others came and went. And now cable is kind of winting. (laughs) It seems like it's starting to kind of go away despite the thousands of channels that show up on my cable box that none of them I really want to watch. I keep thinking, why am I paying for this. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about this, what's happening, because it seems to just be an ever-changing dynamic. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Since I uh, started in this business, they have been opining the death of cable. Cable, the the internet is going to strip cable of all its power and its magic. And, you know, the, the thing I think we, we forget in that in that conversation is the cable companies own the pipe. That the, that the internet flows through. So they're going to be just fine. <laughs> okay, okay. And I, and I think we're finding out that, you know, the internet was going to change, was going to change everything. And it certainly has democratized television, um, but the ways of generating revenue, because at the end of the day, none of, none of these things work unless they make money so that you can make more uh, and they can pay the, pay the people that are creative and make it. You know, the interesting thing is, is that the model for the internet is pretty much the same as the model for cable television. You have to have sponsors. You have to have ads. That, that's, how you, that's how you pay for things. It's all about quality. People find, they find the good shows. You know, when I first got into the business, the, the thing every network would say to you is, we want big characters. We want unprecedented access. And, you know, that really hasn't changed much. What has changed is I think the the audiences the audiences they get more sophisticated. I've never done any of these shows where they're what are called scripted reality. So it's basically a producer sitting down a cast member and saying, "Okay, you're mad at Tim because Tim left the garage door open, and I want you to say I'm so mad at Tim right now." Uh, and then that person will say that. The audience has gotten much smarter about that, and I think has less patience for that. Right. I, I mean, the the thing that my guy, if, if I have a North Star that I kind of try to follow in any of, no matter what the show is, I like to watch smart people talk about smart things, even if I don't understand it. So I want to listen to a chassis builder talk to another guy that understands his process, and they're talking way over my head. There's something interesting and comforting about that for me. I don't think you always need to go to the lower, lowest common denominator kind of stuff. Well, I'm glad it's changing because the term reality TV seems like when it came out, it almost couldn't be further from reality. And you still see that today many times, uh, some of these shows that are ridiculous in my mind. And I'm like, okay, people can't be that, that ignorant. Yeah. Seriously? Well, maybe yeah. they maybe they can, but I think you know what I mean. But I, yeah, you're right. I think people got tired of the guy that owned the the restoration shop throwing the wrench at somebody as they walked out the door and it bouncing off their head and like, okay, that that doesn't work in businesses because you get sued and it's a, this can't be real, yeah. can it? So, but I get it. It you know, it's a, all about entertainment. But I agree with you. I much prefer shows where people are speaking about things that I learned something from versus just fabricated angst. (laughs) 
you know? It's lazy television making because, you know, my job as a producer and a director or a showrunner when I'm on a, a reality show is we've created the sandbox. So, you know, no matter what that is. So maybe if you have nine weeks to build a car. So there's the sandbox. We've, we've kind of laid out the rules. And then it's just my job to pay attention to the, the angst of getting that done and asking the right questions. And, you know, if a person is sitting in front of me and we're talking off camera and in the course of a 15 minute com- conversation, they mention their dad two or three times, then, you know, their dad is probably important to them. So when I sit them down, let's mind that. Let's ask them about their dad because we're going to, we're going to get somewhere bigger and deeper and more real, you know? I think it's more interesting for the viewers, and that's probably why a lot of the successful YouTubers who are creating, and I watch several of them, I watch them every week, and they just, their adventures, and they're even, the shows I enjoy aren't even about cars, which is odd. One of them is a sailing show, and I'm not a sailor, but I'm just fascinated by a lifestyle that this particular couple have created about going out and sailing. Now they've had kids on their boat, now they've got a bigger boat, and they take me to places. <laughs> I, I, you know, I call it my weekly sea escape and i love the sea Uh i came from the ocean i was a surfer but the fact that they're creating content and making a living from this and living on a boat with kids i mean i'm just like what a daring life that's to me i'm in awe of what they're doing so it's really fun so let's fast forward into speed tube tv what is it you've created here how did it all come about and what can people expect to find when they go there on youtube okay well uh well now that you've told me when this show is actually going to air i'll go ahead and break the news that the the network will be changing its name to PowerTube TV because when we announced our network, since we announced, there are two or three other kind of similar networks happening, and they're all using speed in the name. And so we want to stand out from that. We don't want to be, let's just take as an example, let's pretend your show, car. This, this is on our network. What we're afraid would happen is people will go, yeah, I listened to Cars Yeah yesterday. It was great. Uh, wh- where'd you listen to it at? Uh, on one of those speed networks. We don't want to be that. So we're going yeah, to changing the power to power to uh, TV because you can't have speed without power. Come on. <laughs> and so we're going differentiate, differentiate ourselves there. I, I'll give you the, the, the quick rundown of how this just happened. So, you know, I, I've been very lucky and fortunate in this business to be able to do a lot of automotive television that's been super successful. And I would be lying if I said the the whole reason that these have been successful is because of some brilliant master plan that I had. Um, It's really that they have resonated with the audiences and the audiences are the ones that that make you successful or not. I, I think the only thing that I've done consistent on every single show is be authentic to that show. And I think that may be what resonates. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So I have all these great shows that I did and Brian Bassone. Brian was on Pink and then he got hired for Pink's All Out. To, he, would, he would pick the brackets that the cars would run uh, for, for the final of the show. And Brian has always, he, from the first day he, he started on the show, he loved the show. And so when they were all coming to an end there, when Speed was changing to Fox Sports 1, he was like, I wonder if we can buy these, if I can buy these shows. And through his kind of tenaciousness, he worked out a deal with Fox and got Pastime, Drag Race High, Pinks, Pinks All Out, Pinks All Outtakes uh, from, from Speed. And all of those were number one shows on the network. And then once he got close to working this out, he's like, I need, I need your help. So A, we want to do new shows. Um, and what better person to go to than the guy that did these shows. So you you want to team up and do this. And I was like, of course I do, because that sounds really, really hard. And, (laughs) you know, and if, if you're going to spend any time in the entertainment world, it's because you like hard, right? It's because you're, you're okay with hearing no all the time. (laughs) And so, (laughs) We decided to try to do it a little different than everyone else. You know, uh, there are a lot of channels that are coming out and they all have, they all have these uh, paid subscription models and there's nothing wrong with that. But I know just as a consumer, I'm, I'm kind of tired of paying for all these apps. And so we wanted to figure out how could we deliver this content, deliver new content, 
deliver interesting content and still keep it free. So hence SpeedTube was born. Um, and it has been gangbusters. For you regular listeners, you'll remember Brian was a guest on Cars Yeah back in June of 2020. Of course, going right into the depths of that crazy COVID stuff we had to deal with. Sure. You can go back and listen to that show. Uh, talk Nice talk I had with Brian. He was a great guest, uh, as are all my inspiring automotive enthusiasts, of course, here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, inspirations and perhaps what I call our driving inspirations, people or things that are driving inspiration for you. Is there somebody like that in your life? Yeah. Yes. There, I mean, you know, this business in general is a is a collaborative business. All of it gets done by the hard work of hundreds of people. You know, I, I might get the get the glory to sit here and be on the on the radio show and talk about this show and that show, but there are, you know, literally hundreds of other people that bring my vision to life. And and, you know, I really owe my career to there there's three people. The first one would be Rich Christensen for whatever reason deciding all those years ago that hey you know what, you could be a producer and you would be a good producer and somehow recognizing that in me uh, and, and letting me give that a shot. Um, there's a gentleman named Martin Fisher who owned High Five Entertainment where I worked for eight years where I did the bulk of this speed stuff at. Um, Martin Fisher is, is truly a brilliant guy. I, I like to point this out to people. Um, you remember the old Texas stadium when they'd have the roof open and you'd see that shot from the blimp and you'd see those girders that would go across that open roof? Yes. Martin Fisher put those girders in for a Garth Brooks show that he shot for NBC. So that's the kind of stuff that Martin Fisher did. And what Martin did that was so invaluable for me, I came in to business that I knew nothing about. And, and I would say the hardest thing for anyone, no matter what job you're going into that you've never done before is learning the language of that job, right? Because every profession has its own language. And Martin was gracious enough to let me make all the mistakes. And I mean all the mistakes. He'd let me, you know, and never, he would let me figure it out. And that was just super invaluable to me. And probably the last guy who's Still one of my dearest friends to this day is uh, Clay Milliken, six-time top fuel champ, driver of the Parts Plus dragster in the NHRA. Uh, Clay has not only been the host of many shows, Clay has been a sounding board, a collaborator. Most of the important folks that I know in the automotive world until I, I built my own reputation were because of Clay Milliken and his his graciousness to introduce me to people and get me in the right room and all that's been just crazy for me. So a lot of this all comes back to what you originally said, collaborative. This is a collaborative venture and so forth. And with that and with the nature of producing things comes challenges. And I segue into my next question, big challenges you face, but more importantly, what did they teach you once you came out on the other side? Is there one in particular you can share? Sure. You know, what's funny about, challenges and and learning things and you know we all have this thought of how we would handle things and it's not until they actually happen that you kind of know what your beliefs are but i was i was working on a show which i will not not name you know i uh because of covid everything got shut down yep. and so when those restrictions started to last a little bit somebody reached out to me and said hey there's the show and They've been shooting for three months and they're super behind and they really need somebody that knows this space that can help them get back on track. And, and I was so for that. So uh, great fun. And I got there and the executive producer of that particular show turned out not to be the person they portrayed to me and turned out to be, um, they wanted to do things that would harm sponsors that I had brought into this project for them. Ooh, ouch. And as you know, this, the, this whole thing is a relationship business. And the hardest thing for me was I ended up deciding to leave that production before it finished. And so I needed to call my sponsors that I had brought in and tell them the, the unfortunate truth. Hey, I made a mistake this time that 
this is this is not going to be as great as I thought it was. It's not this. It's not that. And I don't know how, but I will figure out a way to make that up to you later. And the amazing thing about that is all of those sponsors, 100%, uh, were all in to do the next thing with me wow. because I had called them yeah. and told them the, front. the tough thing. Yeah. Yeah, I've been transparent. I, I think that's the – we see it time and time again. People just keep digging the hole deeper and deeper instead of just standing up and going, okay, something's not working here. This is wrong. I made a mistake. They made a mistake. Whatever. And just be transparent. You right. see it in companies too where all of a sudden, why are they laying off so many people? I thought we were doing great. Just last week, the boss said everything is super. And then it's not. Yeah, transparency is always uh, – even if it's bitter, is always uh, preferred, especially by sponsors. It, it, it was difficult and challenging, and it wasn't until I called them, you know, after to talk to them about this new opportunity that I realized that the the relationship, uh, because I because I did bite the bullet, because I did stand up and say, hey, look, you know what, I made a mistake, and not just lay it on, you know, other people that they they were willing to continue the journey with me, and and that's rare, I think, in in this world where you know, loyalty is a, loyalty is a, a big deal. So yeah, yeah it's got to be earned, and what you did earned that <laughs> most definitely. Yeah, great story, especially for somebody perhaps young out there listening. They go, you got to you got to stand up, and just tell the truth, and uh, move forward yep. and try to make it right. Special vehicle stories. Now you're you've got to be a bit of a car guy because well, what you're doing there with your channel <laughs> uh, makes sense. <laughs> there is there a special vehicle in your past that you could share a story about? Yes, my. To this day, still one of my favorite vehicles ever is, you know, I, I already told you, I already confessed that I'm a VW guy, and I realize that half the audience is probably too, tuned out because no, of that. No, they're not. <laughs> Look, you know what? I always say that if, if it rolls on rubber, I love it, and most car people are kind of similar. There's always like the Ford Chevy Wars or Ferrari, you know, a Cobra Wars, all these things. But you know what? I think at the end... And just go to a Cars and Coffee, and you can see it. People walk around to a sure. car they'd probably never buy, but they walk up and go, well, this is cool. Tell me about it. And maybe it becomes their favorite, right? Right. Well, I had I had small kids at the time. You know, they were all, I don't know, three, five, and six, you know, small. And I had never owned a VW camper bus. And so, and this was at, at a time when, 20, 20 years ago when you couldn't uh, you, you couldn't pay someone to crush a VW bus, right? People just didn't want them because they're underpowered and right. all of this. And, and so I found this camper bus in Chicago and flew up there and drove this camper home. And for, I don't know, 15 or 16 years, would take my kids every year, couple times a year go camping in it nice they thought it was their clubhouse when we weren't camping in it you know so they'd be out there with their friends playing in it yeah. and, you know can we, can we put the top up dad so we can get up <laughs> on the bed and what year was you know, this, that kind of was stuff this one? it was it was a 1970 vw bus so it was a bread loaf it nice. was a, uh and uh, the bus's name was hank <laughs> and uh we we loved hank I love it. We love it. Yeah, this is cool. Well, yeah, and it's amazing what those old ones are selling for these days. And even uh, moving up into the 70s and, and newer, um, just incredible. So I've got to ask, with the incoming new VW EV bus, does that get you excited? It does, because I think we're, we're kicking and screaming, but, you know, we are moving towards that, yep. right? And, yep. and EVs may not replace all internal combustion vehicles. Uh, at least not in the short term, but they are coming, and at, at the we're going to have to embrace this. And so I'm 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 excited about it. I mean, I really wish it was a, a hybrid because I think really hybrid vehicles are are much uh, a much better proposition than either a totally electric vehicle or a totally combustion vehicle. You know, they're kind of the best of both worlds. But uh, I don't get to make those decisions. So no, me neither. <laughs> uh, I'll take I'll take it. <laughs> Very cool, Hank. I love it. So I'm going to crawl into your skull here with my uh, special degree in car psychology. If you were reincarnated, manifest as a vehicle, what would you be and why? Oh, if I was reincarnated, you know, that's a, it's a great question. 
I think if I was going to be re- reincarnated, I'd end up being like, a, I don't know, a Dodge 3500 with a welding pack on the back because that's kind <laughs> of, it's, it's a great, it's a great metaphor for my life. That's what, kind of what you do and what I do is you, you know, you're there to fix and build and construct. And so, yeah. so I, I, I think, I think, you know, I think that's what I'd be and I'd be happy getting 12 miles to the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> big big Ram thirty five hundred or something. I don't, you know, it's uh, there you go. Yeah, making things happen. So, how about great reading? Since we started off talking a bit about books, is there one book maybe you can recommend to our listeners today? Uh, I, I, absolutely. Can I can I maybe recommend three books? Of course you can. <laughs> so my my all time, you know, my favorite author in the entire world is a guy named Kurt Vonnegut Jr. who wrote Slaughterhouse Five mm-hmm. and. And, you know, most people are familiar with Kurt, uh, but he wrote a book called Mother Night, which uh, it's, a li- it's a light reading, literally my favorite book in the world. It has a, a quote in it where he says, we are what we only pretend to be, so we must be careful about what we pretend to be. I love that quote. I think about that often, and I actually have a original piece of artwork that he did where he wrote that out and signed that for me. Really? Um, so, oh, wow. Yeah, so we'd have, we'd have Mother Night. And then Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persig. Of course, yeah. You know, the book has very little to do with Zen Buddhism, less to do with motorcycle maintenance. And it really is, you know, it's one of those books, it's dense reading, but every time I read, I get something different. And, you know, its main thesis is is to be present in what you're doing, uh, no matter what that is. And if you have high quality engagement, that's kind of the secret to a fulfilled life. So if you're washing the dishes, you're paying attention to the bubbles and and the actual cleaning of the dish and the rinsing, and and that makes that that activity enjoyable. And that kind of spills into my into my you know work because I'm a curious person, and and by being curious, you know that is very fulfilling. And probably the last book I would say is there was a great book called The Outpost, written by Jake Tapper, the 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 newsman. And it's about a outpost in Afghanistan about how it was overrun by the Taliban and the valiant way these soldiers tried to defend it. Uh, most of them ultimately lost their lives. And it's a great, it's great to remember the sacrifice other people are making for us. And it's a beautiful tribute the way he put it together. So those are my three books. Was there a, documentary or something about that the outpost i I think that i think they made it into a movie but as as in so many uh movie adaptations it just doesn't hold up to the book of course yeah Um, yeah i can't even can't even imagine that well uh some great recommendations here and cool that you got something signed by kurt my son who just uh, devours books and is writing his first book right now actually loved the fight club Uh, back when he was in uh, high school, college, and he actually got to meet the author, Chuck, and got something signed by him as well. So he thought that was pretty darn darn cool. Yeah, it's fun when we meet these people that uh, create these uh, stories that we get to be taken away with. So I'm going to enable you to go in the ultimate drive. I'm going to park anything you'd like in your driveway. You can take it anywhere, and you can go with anybody, even somebody who's no longer with us, which opens up a world of opportunities for an interesting drive. So what's that look like for you? Uh, you are going to actually it's all it's all going to make perfect sense uh because you know kurt is my favorite author yeah and uh, uh you know it's funny i'm not an autograph collector i don't collect autographs and i i don't you know i get to be around a lot of famous people but i don't take pictures with them the only autographs i have in my study are all of authors so kurt back in the 50s was one of the first sob dealers in the united states and so I think it would be great to get like in a, into like a 57 Saab 93, which, oh you know, <laughs> it, had, it had a longitudinal like, um, you know, 748 cc two-stroke motor in it. I think it was like 33 horsepower. It's going to be a slow ride. Oh, oh my gosh. A non-synchronous uh, gearbox at a three-speed. And, you know, Kurt smoked unfiltered palm oil cigarettes and have this unkempt hair. And it would be great to have him drive and him mashing those gears and then 
just talking about any subject with him while you're driving down. I don't know. You have, it has to be someplace beautiful, like, you know, Pacific Coast Highway or something. So you have that, at least have something beautiful to look at as you're going 35 miles an hour down the road, you know. <laughs> and holding up all the cars behind you, uh, going, when is this right. guy going to pull out so we can get by? <laughs> but I did say I'm a fan of the ridiculous. And, and I can't imagine, you know, imagine buying, you, people paid for that car. Yeah. And you, you have to put a quart of oil in it every time, every time you put gas in it because it was a two stroke. And, yeah, uh, kind of odd um, in a way. And, and the car <laughs> itself is so unique. I mean, kind of like a big bug, you know, kind of a big cockroach yeah, thing. Yeah, suicide doors on it. And yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. It's great. That was a unique answer for sure. <laughs> well, now that you've taken us on that very interesting ride, I'd love for you to leave us with some words of uh, inspiration or maybe meaning for you that might be uh, helpful to somebody listening today. Mm, well, I mean, I don't, I don't. I don't know how helpful I can be other than I think no matter what you're doing, as long as, as long as you are doing it to the best of your abilities, you're going to get the best out of it. I mean, I am so, I, I get it. I, I live, you know, being a TV producer in a lot of ways is not real life, but it, it's still a lot of hard work. And if you're not, you know, most people think it's, I spend a lot of time on sets and everything that is maybe 2% of my day. Most of my day it's just like any other job. It's managing people. It's doing budgets. It's phone calls. And if you're not if you're not okay with that stuff, the drudgery part, then then that's not the that's not the place for you to be. But I love that for the the two percent of being on a on a set. Or it's you know honestly it's the problem solving part. I think at the end of the day that I love so much. It's it's a picture. It's a puzzle without a picture on the box. And I like <laughs> the fact that I, I'm not qualified to run the fryers at McDonald's, but I can do this. So I'm happy that I've, I have found that. And, and I would encourage everyone just, you know, look for that thing that you want to do. And I hope to God it's not easy because that's what makes it rewarding is because it isn't easy. It makes sense to me. And it's interesting you say that because I just watched a documentary with Ron Howard you know, obviously from Imagine, who's produced lots and mm -hmm. lots of movies. And a lot of what he spoke about was that. He said, you know, this this world of movies is so glamorous from the outside, but it's really just about getting down and doing a whole lot of work and figuring out a whole lot right. of things. And he talked about uh, when he uh, took on the uh, Apollo 13 movie and they were saying, well, are you sure you can do this? You got to produce actors floating in weightlessness and rocket. And he's like, oh, yeah, no problem. And he said he went back to the office and went, how on earth are we going to do this? You know what's wonderful about Ron is that particular movie, Apollo 13, if I remember right, it was nominated for everything, like Best Picture, etc. But it was not nominated for Best Director. I know. He got, none, he got totally none snubbed. Of those, <laughs> yeah. None of those other things would have happened had he not been oh, yeah. helming the ship. He was the director. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really exactly. Yeah, he's he's. I don't know the man, but just from watching this documentary, he seemed like a really. Not, he seemed like Opie, like the Opie we all love. You know, uh, <laughs> just a, a nice guy. I don't know what he's like to work with, but he just seems like he's got it figured out. Obviously, successful in what he's doing. So very cool. Well, how can people learn more about Speed Tube TV changing to Power Tube TV? Where do they go to learn more and watch the shows? So the the network is, it, you know, if you search uh, before the 25th of April, if you search Speed Tube TV on YouTube, that will take you right to the channel or PowerTube or go to PowerTubeTV.com. There's the Facebooks and the Instagrams and, you know, we're we're all over the place. And we'd love to have you come in and hang out and spend some time with us. There you go. I'll put links to that. But easy to remember, SpeedTube, now PowerTube. I like PowerTube. That sounds good. PowerTube feels Thank good. You. Yeah, I like it. Ray, <laughs> thanks for spending some time with me, sharing your world with us. This is fantastic. Congratulations on what you're doing. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you. I usually say I'll see you down the road, but I'll see you on PowerTube TV. How's that sound? Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.